So today we're gonna look at this old McQuay unit. It's had a compressor replaced on it. Supposedly this compressor just runs and runs into a vacuum and doesn't shut off. So I'm here following up. I gotta dig into what's exactly going on with this compressor here. Now, if you've never messed with one of these before, you kind of have controls everywhere. That's fun when the logbook falls out. But here's our control board. We have some stuff going on here. Blower contactors, it's a two-speed blower. Behind here is just the disconnect itself and you have your control and your pump down switches here. Here's all your relays for various stuff on the unit. Your blower, your, I don't think this has heat, but compressor, you get the idea. I think they got rid of this compartment on the newer units, but in here, in this one, it's just fuses. The newer units got a similar footprint, but they did away with this compartment. Not exactly sure where they stuck the fuses. Over here, we have our controls and contactors for the compressor. Let's see if I can get these doors propped open one-handed. So your compressor contactor's there, your condenser fan contactor's there, some fuses for the condenser fans, you've got pressure controls, probably low pressure, and you've got your schematic and all of your relays here. Compressor one has been deactivated here. Obviously there's something going on with it. So we'll go ahead and see what the deal is. So I'm gonna dig into the wiring, study my schematic, my relays, and figure out where everything is and maybe hopefully find a fault without turning it on. So I'll dig in and I'll restart the video when I have an update. All right, so I've been studying the diagram. Now we have CS1, which is control stop one for our compressor one. Now, if we follow that schematic, the relevant part we're looking at is it goes to 102, then to 40, and then it goes down. And then it's coming down through our time delay here, TD1 on wire 112 and out 114 or 113. So 113 goes to 44, goes through the low pressure switch, it goes through the R5 relay, eventually makes its way to 46 on the terminal strip and then over to compressor contactor M1. Now the R6 or the R5 relay is energized by the motor protection, the oil protection. Um, I forget what R1 relay is doing, but that's just our safeties tied in to that relay. So it looks like if what the previous tech said is running into a vacuum is true, we could have a problem with our low pressure switch seems to be the most likely thing. Let's see what that looks like. Check that out here. So initially, I mean, a lot of these labels are worn off the wires. That's not helpful. But from what I can gather, the low pressure switch seems to be fine. I initially thought these were gonna be them, but that's actually this subcooling circuit. So we don't gotta worry about that. They're hooked to this terminal board. They're not in my circuit. It ran, it pumped down. It should have cut out on low pressure. So you can see here, my low pressure switch tied back into these two wires, open line. If I hit the control switch, even with them out of the circuit, and just to, in case it wasn't clear, it was wired with these wires properly in series. Now, are these wires the right wires is my next question because they're totally disconnected. They should be an incomplete circuit manually eliminating the low pressure switch and stopping my compressor from running. But if you see here, it starts and runs. So after some tracing and relabeling, this wire 129 is going to two on the Centronic. It's supposed to be going to two on this motor protector module. So it's swapped with 120 which is supposed to be going to two on a Centronic. So we're gonna have to rearrange some wiring to get that correct. So once the wires were swapped in here, we kind of saw what was going on in here and everything fell in place as far as the wires that were switched. 
it was a pain in the butt to trace what needed to be done. Control switch is on, it's not running now. Should be in time delay. We're about to start it up. There it goes. So now it should pump down and shut off. And there it goes. All right, well, that looks like it's it. Thanks for watching. I know it was pretty hard to see from the spaghetti that's in all these control compartments, but basically what was wrong was wires 120 on terminal two here and 129 on terminal two here were swapped. So it was just back feeding power to the compressor contactor all the time. Simple once you figure it out, once you trace it all down. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to hvacrschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.